Hi, I'm Stefan Nagy. I'm a PhD student here at Virginia Tech, and today I'm presenting our work, Breaking Through Binaries, Compiler Quality Instrumentation for Better Binary-Only Fuzzing. This is joint work with our friends down the road at the University of Virginia, Ann Nguyen Tong, Jason Heiser, and Jack Davidson, as well as my advisor here at Virginia Tech, Matthew Hicks. So a bit of background, um, you know, software quality assurance is by now, as, as we all know, a critical part of the software development life cycle, both pre and post deployment. Um, developers spend significant amounts of time and energy on software testing approaches that automate the bug finding process, of which fuzzing is a part of. Fuzzing known as fuzz testing um, is basically a carpet bombing approach to software testing that aims to generate massive amounts of test cases and then keep the few test cases that exercise some predefined metric of interesting behavior and then repeat this process by only mutating those few interesting test cases. So in the real world, the most common form of fuzzing in use today is what's called coverage-guided gray box fuzzing. Um, companies the likes of Google and Microsoft use this extensively to find bugs in their code, and there's a number of really cool platforms out there that are aiming to make it a lot more user-friendly, like AFL++ and GitLab, um, as well as LibFuzzer. So gray box fuzzing, as the name implies, is a trade-off between black box and white box fuzzing. Black box fuzzing assumes you have no access to the internals whatsoever of the target program and thus because you're only tracking basic input output it's very very fast but you don't get any kind of meaningful precision out of it and white box testing on the other hand as soon as you have the maximal level of knowledge of the program's internals and of course you get more precision but it's just so heavyweight that it doesn't actually scale on any modern programs and in the middle there is gray box fuzzing which assumes you have some kind of lightweight level of access to the target program's internals um, for example the ability to trace code coverage and as such, it's a lot faster than white box fuzzing and a lot more effective than black box fuzzing. And the key requirement here is that you have to be able to instrument the target program to achieve this level of introspection. And if your target program is open source, well, the good news is you can just use any off the shelf compiler and add this in at compile time. However, this instrumentation is not always easy to achieve. So if your target program is distributed as what we call binary only, meaning you don't have access to instrument the source code, it could be because of proprietary reasons or commercialization, or even because the developers just prefer to release the code as pre-compiled, um, you're kind of out of luck. And there's a big gap right now in fuzzing between source available instrumentation and binary only instrumentation. So on one hand, the semantic richness of open source code makes it easy to get high efficiency fuzzing instrumentation as well as add in these kinds of fuzzing enhancing program transformations. But on the other hand, the semantic opaqueness of binary level code makes it much harder to maintain the same level of performance. And as such, any kind of fuzzing enhancing transformations you want to bring over are going to be outweighed by the high overhead of this kind of instrumentation. So our motivating question here was, can compiler level speed and capabilities be attained in a binary only fuzzing use case? And this brings us to our discussion of compiler quality binary fuzzing instrumentation. So as a guiding principle, we felt it necessary to identify the properties of instrumentation that must be achieved to attain compiler level speed and transformation. And in looking at available options for binary only fuzzing instrumentation under the lens of a compiler, we see four big considerations, code insertion, code invocation, register usage, and scalability. And to attain compiler quality instrumentation, we must thus match how compilers answer each of these four considerations. So in our first consideration of how do we insert code, we have two basic options for binary level instrumentation. The first, dynamic translation, operates by running an input binary and then instrumenting it on the fly as it's translating its instructions to the host's instruction set. Now because the cost of translation is typically quite high as it's achieved through means like emulation, and translation precedes any instrumentation or analysis phases, repeatedly paying this translation cost makes dynamic translation very unworkable for maintaining compiler level performance and fuzzing. Now the second category of binary instrumentation, static rewriting, operates by taking an input binary, lifting, decompiling, or decoding it to an intermediate representation, and applying all transformation or analysis passes to this IR level before reconstituting it to an output binary. Now, because static rewriting performs these heavyweight tasks prior to runtime, this makes it much more well-suited to attaining high-level performance for fuzzing instrumentation. And additionally, static rewriting is almost analogous to how compilers work by lifting to an IR and then generating the output binary from this modified IR. Thus, we conclude that to attain compiler-level performance, we need to insert code via static rewriting. Unfortunately, there are a few static rewriting options for binary-only fuzzing, as most off-the-shelf tools instead prefer to use dynamic translation or hardware-supported tracing, neither of which are compatible with compiler quality performance and transformation. As a second consideration, we look to how inserted code will be invoked during runtime. The first approach is called trampolining, which basically means you insert a payload function and then redirect control flow to that payload function via a call 
and redirect it back via a return. However, the repeated redirection to and from this payload function adds significant overhead over time and is thus undesirable for fuzzing. The alternative is to instead inline the instrumentation's instructions within the original instructions. And this is actually the preferred mechanism of most compilers today as it allows for very tight and optimized instrumentation insertion. And in the world of binary-only fuzzing instrumentation, we see that only dynamic translators consistently support inlining. A third consideration toward compiler quality instrumentation is how CPU registers are used and reused. A register's liveness denotes whether or not it is currently in use at that point in the execution. Avoiding clobbering or overwriting in-use registers is critical, as careless instrumentation insertion can and will crash the resulting modified binary. A liveness unaware scheme operates conservatively by assuming that all registers are in use, taking the precaution to save and restore these upon any instrumentation entry and exit. However, the instruction level cost of doing this saving and restoring needlessly, as in for registers that are not in use, adds quite a bit of overhead per fuzzing execution. On the other hand, a liveness aware scheme employs analyses to identify and prioritize usage of dead registers so as to minimize the total save and restore instruction level overhead. As some registers are even costlier to save and restore than others, such as x86's eFlags register, it is important to work around these when possible. As tight register usage is critical to modern compilers code optimizations, it is thus critical to match this in attaining compiler quality performance in binary only fuzzing instrumentation. However, we observe that liveness awareness is more consistently utilized by dynamic translation, but it is unlikely to be of any significant benefit due to their already steep overheads. Our fourth and final consideration is scalability. Modern compilers are largely platform and language agnostic. However, this is a challenge to uphold at a binary only level given the semantically opaque nature of binary code. At the very minimum, a compiler quality instrumentation for binary only fuzzing should support multiple platforms such as Linux and Windows. With respect to binary characteristics, there should be support for common languages, code layouts, and characteristics like debug symbol stripping. Thus, a compiler quality instrumenter for binary only fuzzing should scale to all common binary formats. In the binary only world, it is only dynamic translators and hardware supported tracing which achieve this scalability, yet neither retain both compiler quality speed and transformation abilities. As no existing binary fuzzing instrumenters currently meet all four compiler quality instrumentation attributes, we thus designed Zaffle, a platform for binary fuzzing instrumentation and transformation that upholds the principles of statically inserted inline instrumentation with liveness aware optimization. Zaffle is adapted from the Zipper binary rewriting project and currently supports x86-64 ELF binaries and has cross-platform support for Windows PE32 Plus binaries. Given an input binary, Zaffel first invokes its static rewriting component to build a binary representation and store it in an IR data struct. The IR is then passed through Zipper's Zax transformation and instrumentation phases. The first being control flow optimization to produce an optimized control flow graph. Following this, we invoke Zax's control flow analysis phase, which extracts meta characteristics such as the dominator tree. Given any meta characteristics extracted in the previous phase, instrumentation point selection is made. Finally, with the control flow graph of marked instrumentation points, any liveness analysis or instrumentation templates for block or edge coverage are applied and instrumentation is inserted. The modified IR is then passed back to the static rewriter, which reconstitutes the output binary so fuzzing can begin. At this time, Zaffle is designed to support the AFL fuzzer, but with minor engineering effort, it is feasible to support other fuzzers like HongFuzz. To demonstrate Zaffle's ability to implement compiler-style code transformations for binary-only fuzzing, we implement a suite of five LLVM-based fuzzing transformations from the fuzzing literature. These include performance transformations which typically try to reduce the overhead of instrumentation points and feedback transformations that expand fuzzing scope to a finer grain notion of interesting behavior. It is Zaffle's low-level API that brings a semantic richness to the otherwise semantically opaque world that is binary-only fuzzing. And now I'll discuss our evaluation. For our fuzzing benchmarks, we selected eight diverse open source as well as five closed source binaries. Our bug finding evaluations consisted of five 24-hour trials per benchmark, and in our performance evaluations, we scaled our overhead relative to non-tracing speed. For precision experiments, we enumerated erroneously unrecovered instructions and compared the true and false coverage signal to compiler fuzzing instrumentation. And to test scalability, we used either our automated smoke test infrastructure or manually running the transformed binaries. 
In evaluating whether ZAF will enhance his binary fuzzing effectiveness, we see that compared to the state-of-the-art static rewriting-based AFL Dynast and dynamic translation-based AFL Kimu, ZAF will help to expose 26% and 131% more unique triaged crashes over these two tools. In examining whether Zaffel speed is near that of compilers, we see that compared to the compiler level 24% overhead, Zaffel with and without transformations averages about 27 to 32% overhead, which is quite faster than AFL Dynan's 88% and AFL Kimu's 256% overheads. To investigate whether Zaffel can support real closed source applications, we conduct fuzzing trials on all five of our closed source benchmarks. On average, we see that Zaffel averages 55% more and 38% more unique triage crashes than AFL Dynance and AFL Kimu. And looking at the time to exposure for five unique bugs across these benchmarks, we see that on average, Zaffel is 660% faster at exposing these bugs than AFL Dynance and 113% faster than AFL Kimu. And even exposed a heap overread in the commercial binary analysis tool IDA in under two and a half hours when the closest competitor found it in over 23 hours. In examining Zaffel's precision next to the commercial binary analysis tools IDA and Binary Ninja, we see that Zaffel achieves the highest overall instruction recovery, with none of the instructions it deemed as unreachable actually being reached by fuzzing. And comparing to compiler instrumentation, we see a mean control flow graph coverage accuracy of almost 100%. In testing whether Zaffel scales to real binaries, we apply it to a myriad of open source binaries of varying type, closed source binaries, as well as Windows binaries. Overall, we were able to confirm Zaffel's success on 33 open source and 23 closed source binaries, both Linux and Windows formats, stripped, position independent, and non-position independent executables, binaries as small as 100 kilobytes to as large as 100 megabytes, and binaries as small as 100 basic blocks to as large as 1 million basic blocks. So in conclusion, why Zaffel? Well, much of today's commodity software is distributed as binary only. And instrumenting binary only code is far more challenging due to its semantic opaqueness. And hence, fuzzing it becomes far less effective due to the inability to uphold optimal speed and transformation capabilities at the same time. Mitigating these challenges demands that we close the long-standing instrumentation gap between source available and binary only fuzzing. By carefully identifying and matching the attributes that make compilers so successful for fuzzing instrumentation, Zaffel is the first to extend compiler level speed and fuzzing transformation capabilities to binary only fuzzing. Zaffel's fuzzing enhancing transformations help expose many more bugs in binary only fuzzing than Dynast and Kimu, all while maintaining performance within 10% that of compiler instrumentation, and scaling to multiple platforms, file sizes, complexity, and other characteristics. And with that, I'd like to thank you for viewing this talk. And I invite you to check out the Zaffel source code as well as our evaluation benchmarks at the following link. Happy fuzzing!